tried to do since coming here in, in 2007. My goal in coming here was always to foster a program where uh, there was accountability, that there was integrity, and that there was class in everything that we tried to do, from winning to how we lost on a football field, everything involved. And that will remain in place as we move through this. And as difficult as it is today to stand up here, um, those are the things that we have to remain, uh, that have to remain in, in effect as far as Mark D'Antoni was concerned. So we always talk and try and, and come before people and give honest and transparent uh, answers to questions as best we can. And I want to uh, also uh, emphasize as best we can relative to everybody involved in this situation. We've got high standards of uh, conduct here. We always have. We've gone to great lengths to maintain that. Uh, we've gone to great lengths to educate our, our, our players on and off the field, socially, on the field of football, and then certainly in the classroom. Great lengths. Um, systematic approach in those, in, in those type of things. Not just the check the box type of thing. Um, serious conversations about what can take place and what could happen. Uh, when things mount to a certain level. Again, we want to respect the process. I can't say that enough through this whole situation. When the first statements came out from President Simon and then uh, from Mark, Mark Hollis at that point in time, um, I didn't make a, a comment on that because, first of all, you know, I work for them. We work at a university that there's a structure and there's a high, hierarchy and there's a, there's a, uh, you know, there's a level of, of, uh, of command, I guess, that we go through this. So the statements that they made, made uh, were uh, acknowledging the problem that we were having at that point in time. The initial statement that I did make prior to spring practice was, again, to reinforce our core values and to acknowledge what was going on and uh, the seriousness of the, of the uh, entire uh, uh, event, I guess that I would say, or whatever been an extremely challenging time for all of us. Uh, I don't think there's any question that it's impacted our program from how we do business on a day-to-day -day basis with you to uh, how we do business internally, uh, to how our players are interviewed, to access to her spring practices, to everything that we've done. Um, and again, that's because of the process that, that, uh, that we've been involved in. I think to stand up here and talk about who's going to be our quarterback right now is, tri is, is trivial compared to what we're dealing with. That's why I've not wanted to do that. Didn't want to come up and talk about spring practice, talk about depth charts or um, those type of things because I thought it was unfair to the investigation as a whole. And so we, uh, we refrain from doing that. We've always tried to take a very systematic approach here. And that's, again, what we'll do as we, as we move to the next step. <coughs> the reason we're, we're talking today is because of spring practice. Uh, not really spring practice, because of the spring game. Obviously, I anticipated that this would be sort of finalized to some extent, just in terms of the investigative process, but, investigative process, but uh, that's not been the case. So because we have a spring football game on, uh, <coughs> on Saturday, because it's a community event, because we have a huge youth clinic, clinic that uh, last year drew, you know, 1,800 young people. Um, wanted to come before everybody today and just sort of um, step out in the light a little bit. So that's what we've tried to do. You know, uh, I've stood up here in the highs and the lows. I've stood up here in, after winning a Rose Bowl or a Big Ten championship. Also stood up here in very, very difficult times before. That's never going to change. That's something that's just going to have to... That's the, that's the hat I wear. So as I do this today, you know, obviously, we've had very good times here. We've had some low points, and obviously these are difficult times. But I also think that this is an opportunity to recenter ourselves as a program, as people, and take direction from, uh, from whether it's myself or anybody else in that capacity and move forward. I've always said that, I always will. And uh, with that, I'll, I'll just take some questions. I know there's some questions. Some I will not be able to answer. I hope you guys can understand that. Um, I would prefer they only be one-part questions um, so that um, I can keep it all straight, and I'll do my very best. Mark, beyond 
the three players involved in the investigation. Are there any other players who are suspended for internal rules violations, either regarding that incident or other things? I um, can't speak uh, collectively to the incident, uh, but uh, there are there are some players that are, that are suspended. But and I'll just leave it at that. Mark, you told us on signing day you would address attrition later. Obviously, you're not talking about sus suspended players, either for that or any other incident, but others that are gone. We know Theo and John. Can you address any others? Uh, Drake Martinez right now has decided to transfer. Um, and again, Theo put out a, uh, something that's, you know, we've talked with Theo. There's no problem with Theo Lacus and myself. Uh, he just uh, wasn't enjoying football. And the John Rescue situation is pretty, pretty much detailed in, in the paper as well. So I don't think there's any reason to talk about those. But those would be the three guys. As I, that's my knowledge here. I don't have that in front of me, but that's. Mark, through the last several years of your success, you've talked a lot about chemistry, and how important that has been, what you guys have accomplished. Do you think the things that's happened, you know, through the past season and now since after the season, then has that chemistry kind of eroded? Do you feel like there's something needs to be repaired there? Or? Well, I, all I will say is when things happen to a football program to, or to a family, it takes people a minute to regather themselves and collectively come together. So that's what we've had to do. We had a disappointing season. We had a lot of things go on in our season. You know, I detailed that um, earlier. A lot of difficult things relative to injuries and young players playing and things of that nature, you know. But um, when there's crisis situations or when there's there's situations that um, dictate there's a problem. My experience has been that people collectively come together and identify the problem and find a solution. And that's what we'll do. And in doing that, um, you regain your, your, your chemistry, you regain a refocus or a recentering, as I said before, and, uh, and you press forward. And that's what programs do and that's what people do. And that's what I'm here to do. And I said it on that, uh, on that day, I think I said, <clears throat> on that um, day that I talked at uh, signing, I think I, I talked about my drive, that four and a half hour drive. And that's what I did at that point in time, and, and um, now we're faced with this incident and uh, this, this situation, and I don't want to minimize that in any way. Um, so that's why we've taken this, this action. Coach, you mentioned you don't want to comment on the names of the players because of the ongoing investigation, but the logistics of the spring game itself, there will be players missing. There will be people in the stands, there will be people in the media doing the math and concluding that certain players are not there for certain reasons. How are you going to address that? Are you going to have the players wear numbers, uniforms? I mean, is there a way to mask that at this point? I'm going to allow our players to play with their respective numbers on their backs. You know, but I think the question that was asked before, mentioned the statement that was mentioned before about some have been um, suspended for other reasons uh, are, um, is very true. So I would be careful to paint a brush over our entire program. I think that's your responsibility, not mine. Mark, you said you wanted to get out in front of this and talk today about it, just maybe take some of the reflection off of Saturday and let that be more about football. Is that accurate? And if so, why not be more specific on some of the things around the situation? Well, first of all, I can't comment on an investigation. So that's not my place. I'm a football coach here, I'm ahead of the program, and what I can comment on, I will comment on. What I won't do right now is talk about football because I don't think that that's important enough, quite honestly, to talk about at this point in time in our, in our, um, in our program. I think by doing that, I hope everybody understands that how how serious that we are taking this relative to our football program and, and what we're trying to do. I hope everybody understands that it's not business as usual, that everything that we've done is has been done now collectively. We've got to teach people that, to play defense and tackle and things. We've got to do our day-to-day -day things, but to come out here and, and, uh, and have our players be interviewed and act like there's nothing going on, I just think it's inappropriate, and that's why I haven't done it. Mark, kind of piggybacking on what you just said, coming off the season and the cloud and some of the program, what's the morale of the team been like in, in practice uh, this, this spring? I think I've already answered that. When 
you have a problem, people come together and recenter themselves. It's been as strong as it's ever been. Mark, can you address Curtis Blackwell's suspension as well as the investigation at all? I can't comment on, uh, on the investigation in any matter. Um, you, is, have you ever had any prior issues with Curtis people raise questions about I, I can't comment on any investigative matter. I'm sorry. We're not going to get into specifics about any individual. That's not why we're here today. Mark, with the decision to suspend, suspend the three players, is that made by you on the program or is that made by the administration or someone else? The suspensions of the three players mm -hmm. uh, are by our administration and the program. Can you say when that happened? Is it all no, I can't speak to those things. Sorry. Coach, you mentioned going to great lengths to educate your players. Can you talk a little bit about, I mean, I'm sure that's been stepped up since this has happened. Uh, what, what else has been done? Obviously, you had some kind of program in place before. Has that been altered? Uh, first of all, we have system, taken a systematic approach in everything that we do here, and that's something that's been ongoing and is ongoing across this country right now. And so, based on what's happened previously, I do think that we have some very intelligent people. I'm talking previously, and when I say previously, I'm talking in the country. Uh, and what's going on, I think that, that our people, administratively and within our program, has done everything possible they can to put the proper people in, in front of our players to constantly talk about this. Um, and we've done that from, uh, from day one. So you know, we'll continue to do that. Was there any consideration of postponing the spring game or canceling it or not making it open to the to the public? Uh, only slightly. Only just here's the things that we can do. Here's the different. Here's the different ways. Here we're coming to a, you know, an intersection in the roads. Which way we're going to go? And, uh, only very very slightly. This is one way we could go, but that really wasn't was not. Uh, all the way to our administration and, and to the president's office because I, I think it's important that we all work together on this and we not have our, our own separate identity in this, in this situation. Can you say if any other members of your football staff are currently suspended? I cannot talk to any about any investigations. But, I mean, in general, any suspensions? I think that you guys point blank asked everybody, went through everybody in our entire program. I think that's what the press did, systematically asking a question about every single person. So you have those answers. Mark, Mark, do you have any sense of how much longer this process is going to take and how difficult it is that it obviously seems to be uh, taking longer than many people anticipated? No, I do not. The only thing I can do is, is continue to co cooperate fully with every everybody involved in this investigation. And, uh, which we have done and which we will continue to do so. Mark, uh, can you talk a little bit about the decision to move spring practice up this year? Uh, when you made that, and was there any talk after all of this, uh, the, re the reveal of the investigation, of maybe pushing it back to the normal time that you had it? I moved it up because we lost our bull practice opportunities because I wanted to start playing football again as soon as possible. So we made that decision. Um, very early in January or really in December um, to possibly do this. I knew that the um, I knew that the weather might be a little bit of a factor, but I, fe I felt like we pushed through that, and uh, we're going to day 12 today. It also would give us opportunities. We have a young football team and gives us opportunities on the back end. But again, I, I really don't want to talk about football. We can talk about those things maybe more um, after the spring game. Mark. Two questions, one part each, if I may. Sure. <laughs> when, when you finish three and nine, which frankly seems as trivial as the spring game right now, you said this program will rise again, we'll be back. 
Do you feel as strongly about that after this situation? Yes, I do. I don't think there's any question. Again, I think human nature tells you that people will bind, bind together in tough situations and they will uh, go, forward more, go forward more unified. There'll be more clarity. There'll be a recentering. Uh, that's always the case. And um, I think it's without question. That will happen. The other part is what kind of challenge has this been for you as the leader and the face of this program to see it through this process? Well, I've, uh, what kind of challenge? Uh, you know, there are no easy challenges. There wasn't an easy challenge when I came here. So, you know, this to me, this is this is part of the deal. This is part of the reason that I was chosen as a head football coach here. It was to lead in difficult times, not to lead. Not to put a hat on, walk around the Rose Bowl, and say, "Hey, we won the Rose Bowl." That's not the time. You, know, you find out who you are. Um, you define yourself when things fall around you. You're defined as a leader, and so that this, this, and you know, the next season, these will be challenging moments. But that's that's why I was hired. So those are the, those are my intentions. Mark, outside of your three players that are the subject of the investigation, well, what prevents you from identifying other players in the program that are suspended for all this? Well, I don't think that would be fair to um, to do that right now, just based on the situation, because I think that in doing that. Then I'm, I'm pointing a compass towards other individuals. Right. So I don't. I'm not. I'm not going there with that. So you know, we're wasting our time talking about that. Yeah, is it fair though? I mean, for, for them to be lumped in then with players that aren't on the field, is that right? You'll be the person lumping them in. So if you write about it, no, I don't think it's fair. But you'll be right about it. Mark, I know you, you want to try to keep the attention off of football from the limited pictures and access we've seen through social media. What's been going on in practice? The hashtag one focus and the, the seems the you know speediness of getting this team back to football and trying to keep them focused. Can you give us some insight into what we might see on Saturday at the spring game as far as you know this team coming out in the community? And you know, I, I really don't. No, I can't because that's not what this press conference is about. Because I think as much as anything, what I've tried to do is not say, hey, football is more important than this and than what's going on here. And so and I don't want to start, I don't want to do that right now. I think that, that we need to get to a point where we can talk about football. I know we need to do that. But at this point in time with the investigation not completely done, I don't think it's fair for me to sit here and talk and trivialize what went down. One way or the other, what we, what we have here is a, is a situation that's, that's, that's ongoing. And um, I'm, again, doing everything I can to completely cooperate with everybody involved in this. And so that's my focus. Our focus is to get our guys together, coach them on the field, get ready to play, but then not make, not make it too public where, where it um, sends a message that this isn't that serious. This is serious, extremely serious. Coach, you're caught in this kind of purgatory situation right now where you can't comment. There are fans, though, that are inquiring, finding out information, social media, message boards, us here in the media. This is your chance to talk to them unfiltered. Is there something that's out there right now that you'd either like to clarify, dispute, dispel, or just a message you'd like to send to the fans who have serious concerns about the state of the program right now? Hey, I don't want to hurt too many people's feelings in here, but I really don't read your stuff. So I really don't know what's going on out there. I see some things that are brought to my attention that are totally inaccurate in terms of who's playing and who's hurt and all this kind of stuff. But again, that's something that can be talked about with them. Program to the fans that are concerned. Go green. Coach, you said that you pride yourself on the high standards of integrity that your team has. How do three players fall through the cracks? How can you hold them accountable for that? How do you move forward in the future? Say the second part of your story. Well, yeah, you guys MSU priding themselves on a high standard of integrity. Um, you have three players now. We're facing some pretty serious allegations. How did they fall through the cracks? I think when you look around the country today, you look around the world today, um, it's easy to see how things happen. So that's not my job to say how they fall through the cracks. I'll do my very, very best, and I always will, to make
make sure our program, our players are educated, they know right from wrong, and they're held accountable to the best of my ability. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you know, you're painting a pretty broad picture there by saying that because I can point this direction, that direction, this direction. It's, it's happening in a lot of different places where um, there are problems in the world. So I'll do my best. And you also made mention that it would be trivial right now to ask who's playing quarterback next season. Does that insinuate that your quarterback is involved in these allegations? Really, you're going to ask that? talk about how how much does that wear on you personally knowing I mean you're facing these questions you can't talk about how much has it weighed on you personally how much are you worried about permanent uh, damage as far as perception of Michigan State football is concerned I don't worry about that I don't worry about it. I worry about I, I do the very best I can every day I come to work that's what I'll do I'll continue to do that and um, that's the way I'm built and at the end of that you know I still have a life I have to leave a life I have to be upbeat for our football team. I have to be upbeat for our players. I have to make things fun for our players. You know, I have to keep moving. But with all that being said, I don't have to come in front of people and act like it's it's the same old thing during spring practice, that this is what's going on and this is what's going on. Let's talk about this guy or that guy. So we've negated, we've not done that. And that's, that's basically it. But as far as, as far as how to handle myself and, and what I'm trying to do with my family, with my, with my football team and, um, and everything else. We're trying to make sure that, um, that we move forward. But it is, it is challenging. Uh, Coach, you've dealt with some stuff in the past. This one seems a little heavier than, than stuff you've dealt with before. How has this affected you personally? And what can you do in the future to maybe correct this, whether it's structural, program-wise? How do you make sure this something like this allegedly doesn't happen? Well, I think I just answered the question how I'm dealing with it personally, you know. Um, how, do you, how do you correct it to make sure it never happens again? You know, that's a tough question. All I can tell you is that we educate our football team. We have people coming in front of them. We have people coming to them, coming at them and talking to them in a very um, raw manner. And its education is, goes in a lot of different directions football to all these different things. But we try and address every facet within our program that we see as a threat to them. And we talk a lot about um, about reputation and their reputation and their accountability and their responsibilities. But that doesn't mean it always gets done. But um, we do our very, very best. And I get, again, like I said, this is an ongoing investigation. No charges have been filed as, as at this point. And so this is an investigation. And we want to honor that investigation and the process. Respect. I know we covered quite a bit of ground on this, but as a father of two daughters who went to this school, what message do you have to other parents of daughters out there uh, after this about Michigan State and what you feel the program's role and responsibility is towards protecting the community? My, my uh, I guess what I would say is what I would I always say I do my very best to protect our community, to protect our environment, um, to protect our uh, my family. Um, the message that I would send to everybody out there is I'm going to do the right thing to the best of my abilities. Mark, you are declining to identify any of the suspended players, including some not related to the incident. Is that by your choice or by university council or? Collective choice, how did that come about? I think we've already answered that question as to why. And that's, uh, again, it's a systematic approach by our university and myself. So we're in agreement on that. <coughs> There's been questions all day. What has disappointed you most about this incident or the reaction to it? Uh, well, that it occurred. You know, that we're dealing, that we're talking about this, that we're all here talking about this. But again, I can't comment.
comment on the investigation. There are no charges at this point in time, and we have to let the process play out. Personally, your reaction to the fact that we're all here today and not talking about football, we're talking about something else. Part of the job. Part of the job. I've had tough times. I've had tough times before. I've had tough situations I've had to deal with and talk about before. It's been quite a while, but uh, this is part of the job. Mark, just a quick question. Because Curtis Blackwell is suspended for whatever reason, has that been a challenge recruiting-wise during uh, important recruiting periods? Uh, we have uh, closed ranks and picked up the pieces, and recruiting has gone very, very well so far. But again, I don't want to talk about aspects of a football program. I think it's unfair. That's all good. Here we go. Thank you. Thanks for your time today.